Hey guys, have you ever seen a video on TikTok or YouTube about print on demand with a crazy big number and questioned, wow, they made a ton of revenue, but what does that actually mean from a profit perspective? I have too. And so today what I'll be walking you through is my exact revenue and expense and cost of goods ledger to show you what that actually means from profit and what you can come to expect with Etsy print on demand um, revenue and profit. So stick around. So for those of you that are new here, my name is Megan and in 2023, I launched my own print on demand business all through Etsy. And I started that business really thinking that I would you know, make a couple extra bucks, have my own business and kind of embark on this journey. And in 2023, I was actually able to do $155,000 of revenue. And so I've had a lot of people kind of ask the question of, wow, this is crazy. Like, how did you do this? And so I started this channel to walk folks through how I've been able to achieve that and different things that you might be able to incorporate into your own business, um, especially wanting to highlight things that are real and transparent. So if any of that is interesting, feel free to like and subscribe so more people can find this video. Um, but without further ado, I'll just start walking through exactly my profit and expenses from Etsy so you understand what expenses kind of go into this. So let's get into it. So if you view on the screen my print on demand as one big bucket um, from a revenue perspective, you can see here that my total revenue for 2023 was $155,000. So this includes all of the money that was passed through to Etsy to pay for products. Um, to break that down even further, let's walk through each step. So the first bucket is going to be your sales tax. The most amazing thing about Etsy or one of them is it's a marketplace. So you don't actually end up having to pay this sales tax to the local authorities, which would be a lot of work because each state has a different tax breakdown and it's just kind of messy. So because Etsy is a marketplace, you don't have to do this. But what that means is it gets remitted. So the customers still have to pay this money. And so when the customers pay this money, Etsy immediately takes that bucket and passes it through to the entities that be. Um, so this is something that comes out of that total revenue that you look at. So for me in 2023, this was about $10,000, which alluded to about 6% of um, expenses, but I didn't actually have to do anything here, which is phenomenal. So next bucket is Etsy fees. I posted a video not that long ago walking through what to expect from Etsy fees. I'll link that in the description below. But what that basically means is you have to pay as a seller a percentage of your overall revenue to Etsy as essentially a thank you for bringing that customer to you. Um, you don't own all this traffic. These folks are already kind of searching on Etsy. And so you have to kind of give a percentage of that. When you factor in um, all the different fee structure from like transaction and processing, that is about 11% of my total mix. So $16,000 right off the bat just stays with Etsy and never makes it any further. The next bucket is Etsy ads. Now this is a controversial topic about if you should do them, if you shouldn't do them, I will go in deeper on why I think Etsy ads is a really great opportunity, especially if you're coming in and you don't have your own traffic. So I ended up paying for Etsy ads to get exposure to my shop and I found a lot of good success with it. As you can see here throughout the entire year, I only ended up spending about $14,000, so about 9% of my overall revenue on ads which is a crazy impressive return on ad spend. Return on ad spend is going to be kind of how much you get in revenue versus how much you spent in marketing. So for me, a 10X return on ad spend is a phenomenal metric and something that I would continue to pour dollars in if you're achieving that. But it's definitely a space that I recommend you testing with and consistently checking your data to make sure that you are correctly advertising and not advertising a product that is not going to be selling. So. It is a bucket that I spent a lot of money on and I'm glad I did because that brought a lot more orders to me and traffic to me, um, but test what's best for your business. So the next bucket is going to be cost of goods sold. As you can see here, it's about over half of my total revenue went directly to pay for cost of goods sold. So this is going to be the actual physical product or the shipping cost that it took to get the products to the customer. 
any large business, you're going to have your actual costs be a huge percentage of your overall revenue. Um, and so I think this is pretty standard within the print-on-demand business, especially since you don't have to own any of this inventory before the sales actually take place. Um, so keep in mind that even though revenues are super high, you're likely going to be paying a large chunk in just getting the product to the customer. And then the last bucket that I'll mention is pretty nuanced, but it's basically going to be refunds, which accounted for less than 1%. As I've talked about in previous videos, Etsy does a really good job of as long as you ship the product on time and it arrives, or even if it doesn't, as long as there's documentation that shows that it's shipped, they will protect most purchases. But in some circumstances, it might not make sense for you to wait for Etsy to refund the customer. And it might just make more sense if a customer is unhappy regardless of if you did everything on your part to like assure that happiness that you just provide the refund and make sure that you have a good review and potentially protect that customer comes back again. So that was a really small percentage but something that I wanted to add for transparency and that leaves the last bucket which was my profit. So out of all of this and after all expenses I ended up pocketing about $27,000 which is about 18 percent uh, mind you, this is before income tax. This is just my profit before the government takes additional federal and state um, out of it, um, which I was extremely happy with. I, I netted out at about 18% profit margin, and it seems like across the board, most print-on-demand sellers really shoot for a 20% margin if you're really lucky and your products allow for it. You're trying to get up to 30%, but for this being my first year, not having to own a single product, being able to work completely for home, it was definitely something that um, I'm super proud about. So if this was something that was interesting to you, I'll be posting more. Any questions, drop them in the comments. I'll respond to every single one um, and hit the like button and subscribe for more content.